The leak of the PlayStation 4K has me worried. Details are still scarce, and I know that a lot of those details are highly speculative, but what I've heard has me a little nervous. Part of that is just me as a PlayStation 4 owner worried that my investment's gonna get muscled out by updated hardware with more bells and more whistles. But I'm also concerned for what it means for the state of the industry. The PS4K16 featuring LeBron James appears to be a minor vertical advance in the console's capabilities, like what the new 3DS was to the original 3DS. 4K video and games are still in their infancy, and unless you're playing your PS4 at a computer monitor distance, then your eyes are going to have a real hard time spotting the difference. So it's not missing out on 4K that's got me worried. It's what's at stake if this incremental upgrade structure that used to be a quirk of Nintendo's handhelds with their DS lights, eyes, XLs, and so on, becomes the norm in the console market. But you could say Nintendo is just Nintendo. This might be something that just happens once with Sony. But Microsoft also announced recently that they're ending the Xbox console line as an ecosystem separate from Windows. They're opting instead to make Xbox and Windows one and the same going forward. This opens up the distinct possibility for more incremental upgrades to Microsoft hardware, almost like a pre-built Steam box that you could get. The Xbox you'll buy next year will run faster than the one you bought this year for the same price. Taken together, these pieces of news seem to suggest that the console market is moving away from the model of a single monolithic console release that's supposed to last five, six, seven years. If the console market is moving in this direction, and if the PlayStation 4K will be able to play games that you can't play on the PlayStation 4, which is a seductive option for a hardware manufacturer who wants their customers to shell out for an upgrade, then this presents a problem on the software end. Console-exclusive titles are what drive a console. And one notable fact about exclusives is that while they usually have massive budgets, Unlike most other big budget games, they must creatively differentiate themselves from the competition. For as bad as it's become, the Halo series has always offered something on Xbox you couldn't get anywhere else, and on a production scale that you can scarcely find even on PC. And of course, the PlayStation 4 has Bloodborne and the PlayStation 3 before it had Uncharted and The Last of Us. Say what you will about any of these individual games, but the fact remains that they're a good deal more creative than something EA or Activision would back. They represent more risk because they're less conventional than Battlefield or Call of Duty. And of course, the argument doesn't even need to be made for how different Nintendo exclusives are. Simply put, console exclusive titles are the lifeblood of a console. They're the only reason to own a console, because if you can get a game on any system, and assuming the port isn't horribly botched, it's gonna be best played on the PC. And now with things like the Steam Link bringing PC games into the living room, just like a console does, the experience is about the same. So really, for consoles to survive, they need to tie a strong exclusive software offering with their hardware and online service ecosystem. I think that the PlayStation 4K threatens this ecosystem, and by extension, the entire viability of consoles. I'll try explaining this in a little bit of a roundabout way, I promise I'll get to the point. To date, Bloodborne is the only PS4 exclusive game worth playing. Unlike with a 3DS, there's nothing else I can get on the PS4 that I can't get equivalently on the Xbox One or better on the PC. And yes, I'm looking forward to some games, but if a PS4K coming out this year will have exclusives of its own, then my confidence in my PlayStation 4 purchase and the PlayStation ecosystem as a whole will be shaken. That's because a console is like an investment. You pay 400 bucks or whatever it costs, and in return you want quality exclusives for a certain number of years, hopefully many years. But if Sony sets the precedent with the PS4K of outdating their hardware more quickly, then I simply won't be able to trust that my investment will hold 
buying any Sony system in the future. Remember, we're not talking about a PS3 Slim or an Xbox 360 Elite. This is a console with new features that early adopters won't get unless they, god forbid, spend another $400 for the new system. Early adopters are the ones getting slapped in the face by incremental upgrades, and early adopters are what keep consoles alive in the first place. Companies like Sony and Microsoft rely on people buying the console early when there's not many games for it, and that's how they justify to developers, yes, you should make your game a PS4 exclusive because we have this install base and it's going to reach people and will help you reach people by putting you in our stage and such. And you might say that's all fine, the market will play itself out, that if they punish early adopters with 4K incremental upgrades new versions of their hardware, then those early adopters will vote with their wallets, as they say, and make the console market dry up. But I see a potentially darker future. If enough people buy in to this tiny incremental step forward, if people actually shell out for this upgrade, we'll see more PS4Ks, maybe more often, constantly iterating hardware with one or two more features each time. Some games and some applications just won't run on the old hardware, and if they do, they won't run as well as if they were on the more powerful system. This possibility sounds a suspiciously awful lot like a different consumer electronics market. Let's do our best to avoid this timeline of PS4 K S6 Pluses and not buy in to this more frequent incremental console upgrade structure. <laughs>